language. Yeah, so I would say if it were up to me, every programmer should know how to read basic assembly language instructions. Read, not write. And I want to be very clear okay. on that. People like me, we don't really write assembly language hardly ever. For testing, sometimes, or to figure out why there's a problem with something, we might. And very occasionally, if there's really some super important thing, maybe someone will write some assembly language. But by and large, when we talk about this kind of programming literacy, we're actually not talking about writing assembly language, we're talking about reading it. Because most CPUs nowadays and most compilers can be coaxed into a position where they simply will do a fairly good job of executing code without you having to get in there and specify it. So the note, there's, there's a misconception that comes from a long time ago. It's what it was true in the past, so it's not erroneous, but it is no longer really the case that getting any kind of reasonable performance out of a computer meant hand coding things in a simulator. That is simply false. It, it isn't, it is almost never done nowadays. There it's like are your certain... famous roller coaster tycoon, right? Yes, that is almost never necessary. And to the extent that it is necessary, you're talking about very specific kernel, like not kernel, the operating system, but like little nugget routines that make okay. a huge difference to something somewhere like video codec, right? Where it's just plowing through and we care, we want it to be as fast as possible. Okay. But most code, no one is doing that, right? So when I say something, I mean reading it. Being able to read basic ARM or basic x64 assembly language to the point that you understand the kinds of operations that the CPU does. Then understanding the CPU's execution model for those things and the basic speeds at which each of those things happen, right? I'm a big fan of this. I mean, in the web world, I talk about like, you should have a really good heuristic for like how yeah. long it takes to go to the database versus to disk versus to RAM. Um, this is like that at an even lower level, right? Yes, it's the exact same thing. It's basically just saying every programmer should have, you know, like a doctor, a lawyer. They have continuing ed credits they have to get. They have to go to like seminars and prove that they were still like, in my world, it'd be like programmers have to keep their knowledge up to date at roughly what is going on inside the computer. You don't have to be a master. You don't have to be Agner Fogg and like be doing all kinds of crazy tests to figure out exactly how the iCache or the UOP cache is read, how many things it can feed from there to the back end in one site. Like, okay, that's full on hardcore optimization land and you don't have to go there. But just understanding Basically, this is what a CPU will do on one cycle. This is what it will kind of do. Just yeah. getting that pipeline understanding. Here is how fast an L1, L2, L3, and main memory are. Here is how fast an SSD transfer is. Just that is, I think, something everyone should know. And that way, when they write a piece of code, they can go, wait a minute, this is doing like only, you know, two milliseconds worth of operation but it's taking like five seconds. Like what happened, right? Yeah. And there's two benefits to this. One is now that programmer knows that they should be doing things differently. Find another library, find out what's wrong with your VM, find out what happened, like look into it, right? But the second thing is the more you do that, the less you have to do it. Because if every JavaScript programmer got pissed off when something was going too slowly, then the backends and the API services would all get better because no one will put up with it, right? Right. So it pays dividends as well, right? It, whereas if everyone's just happy with everything running super slowly, then then the backends get slower or they stagnate or they don't reach, they don't modify Python to fix the problems with it that make it hard to compile. They don't fix JavaScript's problems. They don't fix whatever, right? So the more people who are aware of this, the less structural decay there is as well because people wouldn't put up with it.